Napoli. What a place. The city that sits in the shadow of Mount Vesuvius is famous for pizza and football. Is there any better combination? The champions of Italy were the hottest thing in European football last season. They are an iconic team with an iconic stadium and history envied by most as of course Naples was home to Diego Maradona. I wonder if he will make it into Napoli's all-time 11. Naples has seen a few golden eras starting in the days of Diego and also proceeding before our very own eyes last season. But there's only space for 11 players in their best ever team. So who will it be? Cavani, Oshiman, Mertens or Hamsik? Could it be none? Could it be all? Have your say in the comments section below and sit tight as we reveal the best 11 in Napoli history. Dino Zoff is an easy pick at number one for Napoli's all-time greatest starting 11. Okay, after a wonderful five years at Napoli, Zoff actually left for fierce rivals Juventus. But we'll forget about that for now because at Napoli, Zoff was truly incredible. He played for the club from 67 to 72 and he won a European Championship and a World Cup with Italy as well. He was the best keeper ever to play in Naples. There is no doubt about it. Giuseppe Bruscolotti is our right back. He captained Napoli to their first ever Scudetto in 1987. So he's a bit of a shoe in to be fair. The wing back also won two cups for Napoli as he played over 500 matches for the club in 16 years. Needless to say, he was popular amongst the fans and was a loyal servant to a club whose adoring following give that love back to those who can prove the bond is a true one. Khalidou Koulibaly has been in the news a lot recently after a short stint at Chelsea and then a lucrative move to Saudi Arabia. But the reason this centre-back stock went so high was because he was unbelievable in Naples. Koulibaly played for the club from 2014 to 2022 and went from relatively unknown to being widely regarded as one of Europe's top defenders. Alongside Koulibaly at centre-back is Moreno Ferrario who is Napoli's third highest appearance maker of all time, and another member of the famous side that brought a much coveted first Scudetto title to the city in 1987. He was key that year in particular as Napoli won the league and cup double, an unprecedented triumph for a club that hadn't won a league title until then. In at left back is a man who was a Napoli stalwart between 1980 and 84, Ruud Krull. One of the top defenders of his era, the Dutchman Kroll provided the perfect balance to let the team's attacking stars go and get the work done down the fancy end of the pitch. His impact was dramatic and upon his arrival, the amount of goals that the club conceded decreased dramatically. In the centre of midfield is one of very few but much adored adopted sons of Naples, Marek Hamšík. The Slovakian captain was dynamite for the Azuri and ran their midfield and their entire team in reality for 12 magic seasons. During that period, Napoli returned from a struggling side to cup winners and title contenders who even enjoyed plenty of special European nights. Hamšík was great at his worst and unplayable at his best. He made a remarkable 520 appearances for the club and scored 121 goals. In their long transition period back to the top, he was probably the most important member of the team. Dries Mertens is the tricky little Belgian winger and World Cup semi-finalist that spent eight years in Naples between 2013 and 2022. He played in a range of attacking positions for the club, from striker to central midfielder to winger, and shone in all of them. Mertens played over 300 games for the club and scored 148 goals in all competitions to become the club's all-time record goal scorer. If Mertens will be terrorizing defenders down the right wing, then it'll be Lorenzo Insigne down the left. Insigne became a fan favorite, scoring and assisting regularly for Napoli. He was a local boy who came through the ranks at the club before breaking into the senior team in 2010. 
In 2013 he became a regular and he would be a key player from then on until he left the club in 2022. He won two Coppa Italia titles and scored over 100 goals in just under 400 games. The diminutive number 10 in this team needs little introduction, Diego Armando Maradona. If there is one place that this man is worshipped as much as he is in Argentina, make no mistake about it, that is Naples. From 1984 to 1991, Maradona single-handedly transformed the name and history of this football club. He led the club to break the glass ceiling, winning a first ever Serie A in 1987. They won the Cup in 87 too, the UEFA Cup in 89 and another league title in 1990. It was the stuff of dreams for a city with a rich football culture that had never hit such heights. Maradona had literally been the saviour and is easily the best player in the club's history. Edinson Cavani has scored goals for some of the world's most iconic football teams, from Man U to Boca Juniors and PSG to Valencia. However, this phenomenal goal scorer really made a name for himself during his devastating spell in Naples. He had an unbelievable record of 104 goals in 138 games for the club. He won the Coppa Italia and alongside Hamšík and Lavezzi was a crucial part of a dazzling trio that helped Napoli to compete in Europe too. In 2013, Cavani was Serie A's top scorer and during his time at the club he was painfully close to helping the Azzurri reach a title. Last but not least is the big Nigerian sensation Victor Oshiman. Yes, he may have only been legendary for one year. But what does that matter? Oshiman is one of the hottest properties in world football now and it's all thanks to last year's stellar season with Napoli where he was a key part in bringing them a first title in 30 years. Make no mistake about it, he is a legend in Naples. An under 17 World Cup winner too with Nigeria, Oshiman has always been tipped for stardom. He was promising at Lille but he has exploded in Napoli. His 31 goals last year was huge for their return to glory. And if Oshiman stays and scores at the club for much longer, they're going to have to build him a statue. So there you go, a club with an incredible history that may not have dominated like some, yet it's the home of the Serie A title and of Diego Maradona. How do you think this Napoli 11 would fare against the likes of Madrid, Munich or the other Italian teams? Let us know your thoughts in the comments below.